Hello and good morning dear students. So today I am going to deal with the, the second section of the waistline and this is a game of chess. Now try to have a look at the title of this section and this is a game of chess. Now the title of this section it, it seems to come from Middleton's play Women Beware Women. So it's a play written by Thomas Middleton. The name of the play is uh, Women Beware Women. So what happens in the play? So, you know in the play uh, the mother-in-law is kept busy in a game of chess while the daughter-in-law is raped by the duke. So the title is coming from this, this play of Thomas Middleton where the mother-in-law is, is kept busy in a game of chess and the daughter-in-law is, is molested by the duke. Fine. So it shows the perversion of sexual values in the modern society. Uh, you know, sex which has been the very source of life since the dawn of civilization. Today it has become a matter of intrigue. Today it has become a matter of moves and counter moves between the two sexes, I mean between men and, and women. Right? So, you know, sex has been the very source of life. But uh, today this, this, you know, source of life, it has lost its spiritual significance. Means, it is done not for the procreation of generation, rather it is done for instinctual gratification in order to satisfy the enjoyment of flesh. And that is why, you know, it has resulted in, in degradation in the modern society. Fine. Now try to have a look at, at the section. I mean, just try to have a look at, at the text of the section. And... Uh, uh, you'll find that, that it begins with the bedroom of a rich and fashionable lady. Fine. Then we find that uh, this lady, uh, she sat in a chair which is, which is shining brightly like a throne decorated with jewels. Fine. Now this chair, I mean, it, it reminds us of Cleopatra in a barge on the river in Shakespeare's play. Antony and Cleopatra. I mean, you can remember the very picture of Cleopatra who was sitting in her barge on the river in, you know, this play. Right? Then uh, a dressing table is also there in this room. And uh, this, this dressing table is also glowing very brightly. Then we have the looking glass also and this looking glass is, is held up by wooden pillars on which, you know, the pictures of wine creepers and cupids are carved. So a looking glass is also there and this is, this is held up by wooden pillars. Fine. And uh, on, on it you can find the pictures of wine creepers and, and you know, cupids. Fine. And then... Uh, on the dressing table, you know, if you try to have a look at the dressing dressing table, uh, you know, we find small bottles which are made of ivory and uh, these bottles are full of, you know, artificial perfumes and these perfumes or these, these scents, uh, they have been bought from unknown lands or, or you know, unknown countries, right? So, uh, you know, these, these bottles of scents and powder, they are open and, uh, you know, they can trouble or confuse anyone who inhales their, their strong odor. Right. Anybody can be confused. Anybody can be troubled by, by the strong odor of these, you know, uh, perfumes. Then, uh, you know, the description of, of you know, the cosmetics of this lady. So this, this description of her cosmetics, it reminds us of Belinda's toilet table in, uh, you know, The Rape of the Lock, written by Alexander Pope. So the toiletry of Belinda is also very, very rich. It is highly decorated. You can find all types of perfumes, puffs, powders there, right? 
so this this description of the the cosmetics of this lady it reminds us of uh, belinda's toilet i mean Bel belinda's toilet table in the rape of the lock right then if you try to have a look at this this bedroom i mean the bedroom of this lady uh, it is it is a reminiscent of the bedroom of of imagine imagine in symboline symboline is a play written by william shakespeare and the imagine is is a character right so this bedroom reminds us of uh, imagine in in symboline and the decorated room of this lady you know it reminds us of the festal hall of dido dido you know she was the queen of carthage she was the queen of carthage and she committed suicide after the departure of uh, after the departure of her lover enes and the description is is you know given in in the enid uh, an epic written by virgil fine this uh, we see that uh, you know the beginning of the section it is it is a mosaic of quotations references and allusions from different authors and and you know it it illustrates eliot's poetic shorthand it illustrates eliot's device that is you know poetic shorthand so it is a device with the help of which eliot has linked the the contemporary wasteland with places and scenes in history myths and legends getting my point so the bedroom of this lady so the chair of this lady the 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 toilet table of this lady you know everything is is you know <clears throat> being linked with uh, you know uh, everything is being being linked with with you know places and scenes in history myths and and legends right so the beginning shows that the decorated room of the lady it seems to be more a brothel house than a room because everything is in excess there so it seems to be more a brothel house than than you know a, a room of any lady fine and uh, you know i mean some of the things of this lady uh, the, i mean they have been compared to some some uh, you know great figures of the past like like cleopatra belinda imogen and 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 dido but the irony lies in the fact that this lady has nothing common with with cleopatra with with belinda with with imogen or with with dido you know cleopatra is very famous for her infinite variety and you can remember the two lines from the very play where shakespeare says that age cannot wither nor custom can make stale uh, your her infinite variety so cleopatra is known for her infinite variety and uh, i mean belinda is known for her trivial activities and her 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 you know passion for fashion right then if you talk about you know imogen uh, i think she is she is known for her tenderness and at the same time she is known for for her artlessness and you can remember one statement given by william hazlitt hazlitt calls imogen the most tender and the most artless lady right then uh, dido you know dido is is known for her passion in love and as i have told you that uh, uh, she she committed suicide after the departure of of her lover enes right so though this lady has been compared with some great figures and uh, you know her room her throne and 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 her you know toilet table they have been linked to some great figures but uh, ironically you know this lady has nothing common with you know these great figures i mean cleopatra belinda imogen and and dido right and the intensity of their passion i mean uh, that of cleopatra belinda imogen and dido though guilty is contrasted with the triviality of love 
in the modern wasteland. Fine. Then, uh, you know, in the same section, uh, we see the picture of Philomela. And this picture of Philomela, it is carved over, over uh, the fireplace in the room. You know, we have a fireplace also in the room and the fire that is, that is burning there, you know, uh, some dolphins are floating there and, and uh, the color also, uh, you know, the color also keeps changing. So let us talk about uh, Philomela. You know, uh, it's it's a Greek myth, and uh, you might have gone through it it while while reading, you know, or to a nightingale written by John Keats. Anyways, I'm just repeating here. See, uh, it's a Greek myth, and according to this myth, Philomela uh, she was the daughter of King Pandion of Athens. So she was the daughter of King Pandion and Pandion was, uh, you know, he was the king of Athens. Fine. Philomela was the sister of Prosne. P-R-O-C-N-E. Prosne. So she was the sister of Prosne and Prosne married King, King Teres of Thrace. Fine. Now, on the fifth year of their marriage, uh, Prosne asked her husband, I mean, she asked Terrace to bring Philomela to Thrace uh, because, you know, she had not seen her sister quite for a long time and that's why she wanted to, uh, you know, see Philomela and that's why, you know, she, she requested her husband to bring Philomela to Thrace. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, Terrace went to Athens in order to bring Philomela to trace. So when he was coming back, you know, he raped Philomela. Fine. So on the way coming back to, to Thrace, he raped Philomela and he cut off her tongue and he left her on the way. Fine. So it was a heinous crime committed by, you know, terrorists. First he raped her then he cut off her, her tongue and then he abandoned her. Right. Anyways, Philomela communicated the matter to her sister. Uh, words go that uh, she communicated it by writing on, on a dry leaf. Fine. So when Prosni came to know about this injustice, she decided to take revenge. And in order to fulfill her revenge, you know, she killed her own son, Itis. Actually, she had a son, Itis, with, with Terrace. So, in order to take, you know, this revenge, she killed her own son, Itis, and she boiled his flesh, and then she served this flesh to her husband. Right. Now, Terrace came to know about this fact when uh, the two sisters, I mean, Prosny and Philomela, when they served the head of Itis to Terrace. So initially, uh, you know, Terrace could not find out that, uh, you know, he was given the meat of his own son. So he came to know about it only when the two sisters, you know, they served the head of Itis to Terrace. Now, out of anger, Terrace turned to kill both the sisters, but uh, both the sisters, they fled and, and, you know, they prayed to the Almighty. And worse go that the Almighty heard their, you know, prayers and a, a, a miracle took place. Now, what was the miracle? Actually, uh, the God turned all of them into, into birds. How? You know, Prosni was turned into a swallow. Swallow is a bird. Philomela, she was turned into a nightingale. Again, nightingale is, is a bird. And Terrace, he was turned into a hoopoe, hoopoe, another bird, right? So this is the story of Philomela. Now, what is the significance of this story in the second section of the Wasteland? And why this story has been presented by, by Eliot in this, in this book? And recurrently, you know, the story of Philomela has been referred to in the book. Why? So here... You know, Eliot is presenting a dichotomy between, between the past and the present. See, 
In the past, Philomela was raped and she was transformed into a nightingale. Why? Because she suffered, she repented and that's why transformation could be possible to her. Right? Now, in the present, girls are still raped but uh, transformation is not possible for them. Why? Because they do not repent or suffer. So, you know, this is a kind of, uh, I mean, this is a kind of dichotomy between the past and the present. In the past also, people committed sin, but they repented and they realized, you know, their sin and they suffered and that's why they got transformation or salvation. But in the modern society, you know, people commit sins, but even after committing sins, I mean, they do not realize and they do not suffer and that's why transformation is not possible to the modern human beings, right? And still the bird nightingale sings out, you know, her, her painful story, but uh, to the insensitive and dirty ears of modern wastelanders, it is only a sound like jug, jug. Today, you know, nightingale is known for... Uh, for her melodious voice. But worse go that hidden behind this, this melodious voice, there is a kind of pain. And this is the pain of the suffering that, that she, she, you know, that she, I mean, suffered. But, you know, we people are not able to recognize this, this pain. What we recognize is just the, the melodious voice. And in the modern society, it is only a sound. That is the check check sound. Right. So the poet has presented a resembling contrast between the past and the present. I hope you are getting my point. So here the poet has represented the resembling contrast between the past and the present. So resemblance is there at the same time, contrast is also there. Right. Then uh, let us move further, uh, you know, in this section and then uh, we hear the footsteps of someone who is, who is climbing up the stairs and uh, through the text you will come to know that this someone is her lover, the lover of this lady and, uh, you know, she became uh, excited. I mean, she knows very well that the lover is coming for some pleasure and that's why you know, she became excited and, you know, finally they, they committed sex without any emotional attachment, without the exchange of, you know, words between them. So it shows machine-like life of the modern wastelanders, right? So the conversation between the lady and the lover, it shows that there is no love bond between them. There is no relationship between them. There is nothing like, uh, you know, you can call, uh, you know, spiritual or, or pure between the two. So it is merely beastly copulation. And that's why their life is a living death. And death brings no hope of transformation to them. So we can say that it is not only life that is insignificant, even death is insignificant to the modern wastelanders right because death is not followed by rebirth because death is not followed by transformation right so to the modern human beings you know life is absolutely insignificant because you know they have nothing in their lives and uh, they do not wish for anything that is positive in their in their life but their death is also insignificant why because it is not followed by rebirth or res resurrection or transformation, right? Then the next episode is from the low class of society where we find, you know, Lil and her friends. Lil is a character. So we find Lil and her friends and they are sitting in a restaurant, right? So through their conversation, uh, we come to know that uh, Lil's husband, Albert, uh, he is coming, he's coming back to home uh, after the war is over. And one of the friends of Lil, uh, she, uh, this friend is basically the speaker here. 
and this speaker tells her that her husband is coming back and you know she must maintain her beauty in order to attract her husband so her husband is coming after four years so she must maintain her beauty so that the husband could pass some some quality time you know with with her right now this conversation is a bit funny and hilarious because you know when this friend of lil asks her uh, what she did with the money that her husband gave uh, to her to buy a set of teeth actually lil lil has some some problem of teeth so before his departure albert gave some money to lil in order to buy a set of teeth because without teeth uh, you know she looks very uh, you know she looks very ugly fine so here the conversation uh, becomes a bit a bit funny is that clear and uh, the friend of lil that is that is a speaker she she asks lil uh, what what she did with the money that that albert gave to her to buy a set of teeth fine and finally this this friend of lil she clearly tells lil that if if she remains unable to attract her husband he may go to another lady he may go to another lady so it shows again there is no bond between the husband and the wife fine so <clears throat> the poet has depicted both the sections of the society the rich section and and you know the low section fine but degradation is everywhere though there is a contrast in both the sections but one thing is you know common and that is loss of values whether you talk about the upper class society or you talk about the lower class society uh, you know in both the societies you find the loss of value right but i think the deeper contrast lies between the past and the present how in the past at least transformation was possible getting my point in the past at least transformation was possible as a result of suffering but it is not possible in the present you know uh, philomela uh, she got transformation why because she suffered and she repented but today in the modern society this transformation is not possible fine so to conclude the section uh, again let me let me you know summarize it you know the section focuses on the failure of uh, sexual relationships in the modern society and it presents a contrast between uh, you know uh, two sections of life life in a rich and magnificent magnificent setting and life um, in the low and vulgar setting of a london pub fine and we find that in both the classes sex has become a matter of moves and counter moves between between men and women so this sexual perversion it has become a common phenomenon in in the modern society right and you know even the voice of nightingale uh, that is not uh, it is not that which which filled the entire desert with inviolable voice so to we people i mean to the modern wastelanders it is merely a jug jug sound right and further the theme of life in death it is it is stated specifically in the conversation between you know the man and the woman i mean the woman and and her lover and if you remember if you go through the conversation you know there are some questions from the side of the female like uh, she asks i'm just just putting some questions before you uh, she asks uh, the lover are you alive or not is there nothing in your head why do you never speak it means the lover never speaks it means they commit sex even without changing a word so there is no bond between that you and they they are working just like just like machine insensitive people they have become and they are trying to fulfill themselves i mean they are trying to to satisfy their instinctual gratification right and finally you know the lover answers i think we are in red cell eh? where the dead men lost their bones fine so there are three questions from the side of the woman like are you alive or not is there nothing in your head why do you never speak 
and just one just one answer is from the side of the lover and it is very illogical and irrelevant and very insignificant what is the answer he says i think we are in red cellar where the dead men lost their bones so there is no connection between the questions of you know the lady and the answer of this lover so it shows that not only life but death of modern man is also without any significance fine and uh, you know the section ends with the conversation of lil and her friends about albert and it it also you know it also shows the hollowness and and artificiality of the modern society thus the entire section it displays a vulgar game of sexual relations everywhere i hope the section is clear to you and thank you good day